Welcome to this modding tutorial for Battle Trauma. Timestamps have been added for your convenience. The Submarine Editor is probably the best editor the game has implemented. While for the creatures you might want to add stuff through XML, there is absolutely no need to do so with the Submarines or Outpost pieces. To begin with, you're first going to see a completely blue screen. These buttons up here work to open and save projects. This button down here are the items that you can place onto the sub. The first thing you'll probably do for the sub is the hull. When I say hull, there are two types. The visual hull, which are these walls. I'm sure you can guess how these work, but just in case, here's a small quick description. They block vision and when broken, they allow water in. Then there's the physical hull, which controls what are the dry areas of the submarine. Usually, you want to do this after the visual hole. Remember, this dictates what areas are protected from the deadly pressures from the outside, so it's important that you keep them close to each other. The cost of the submarine is greatly tied to the area of this hole. As Barotrauma has many submarine simulation elements, the hole does more than just dictate which areas are dry. It will also dictate the buoyancy of the submarine. If you're unsure how effective your ballast will be, click on the ballast hole and then check for this text. If you have multiple holes for ballast control, then click them all using control, and then the sum of their areas will be used for the calculation. This text confirms if it has enough area to control the downward speed. This number will be important for later. As a final note on holes, you can rename and link multiple rooms using space. Both are used for the command room, the former to identify the section by name, and the later to treat them all as a single room, like shown in screen. Gaps are another important tool. They allow the flow of water and air through the holes. Normally, gaps are included in doors and hatches of all kinds, but if you want to connect multiple handmade holes, like the ones in this picture, then you'll want to connect them with gaps to allow the fluids to flow normally. And speaking of command room, your hull will require a certain amount of important items to function. The navigation terminal, the reactor, junction boxes, oxygen generator, pumps, engines, and static defenses. The reactor is the heart of the ship. It powers all of its systems with the power of nuclear physics. I'm going to touch the wiring of it real quick. This one shuts down the reactor when any signal arrives. This one is how you send powers to out items. This chunk sends the various conditions of the reactor, and these allow you to control the turbines from somewhere else. The junction box will receive and deliver power from the reactor. You want to use junction boxes, as the reactor won't have as much capacity for all the systems. Each of these pins will only accept up to 5 cables, so you will have to distribute them accordingly. There is no limit to how many boxes you have, but the more you do, the higher of the job to maintain it. The oxygen generator is the lungs of your ship. It only needs wiring to the power, and then it will require you to distribute vents across the submarine. Finally, link these vents to the oxygen generator for them to work. The pumps control the level of the water inside the submarine. There are two kinds of pumps. The drainer pumps, used mostly to keep the water out when there is a breach, and the ballast pumps, which help to control the buoyancy of the ship. Remember, always add the tag ballast to the ballast pumps. The engines work in synergy with the ballast pumps. While the pumps are the vertical mobility of the ship, the engines are the horizontal. This item must have its red indicator outside of the ship for it to work. The navigation terminal is the brains of your submarine. The wires in velocity X out will usually be wired to the engines and the Y to the ballast pumps. The nav terminal also allows to have three buttons to send signals. You can customize the values they send and the name the buttons will have. You will usually link it next to a monitor status, allowing you to have the information of your submarine next to your control of it. Remember of the number of the ballast? In Nav Console, you can head over to the steering and change the neutral ballast level to the number shown. 
There is also the docking hatch. It has a bit of a weird wiring, but if you use the already provided docking hatch in the submarine editor, you will only have to wire these components. The static defenses, from modest coil guns to high-tech lasers, they are controlled by three things, a supercapacitor, the periscope, and the loaders. The supercapacitor is a special kind of battery that saves a lot of power, which is then used by the gun. In other words, you want to wire your guns to the supercapacitor instead of directly to your junction boxes. If you don't, you will break your boxes from the sudden power surges when you fire. The periscope, on the other hand, will control the direction and actions of the weapons. The loaders control the ammo that's been fed to the weapon. This is not done via wiring, but by linking. Make sure you link the proper loader to its weapon. There are two more important things to add. One are the spawners and the other the waypoints. Waypoints are important for the AI navigation inside of the ship. Although not really necessary, it is important to be able to play with bots and crucial for any AI movement. Spawn points will control where your jobs spawn and what special tag their ID will have. As decorations, you have plenty to choose from. There are several walls you can use to differentiate each room, there are decals, furniture, miscellaneous items, fins, letters, numbers, and many, many more that you can experiment with. Let's say you want to make something else in a submarine. How about a wreck? Well, this is almost the same as a sub, you will probably want to use the wreck version of items, and add a hole in the hull here and there, alongside some spawn points for the monsters. You can also make a thalamus variant of the wreck by adding thalamus items and decorations. This will only show up if the submarine is rolled to be infected. Thalamus turrets also need to be wired and linked, but only the ammo and the turrets themselves. Outpost modules are much smaller and they are only rooms. You can make rooms with entrance to the left, right, bottom and or top like shown in the screen. Do everything as normal, but after finishing, place a wall on top of the door, completely covering them, and then link them. Finally, to the doors and walls, check the box Remove if linked door is in use. This, as the name implies, will remove the walls so the doors can be accessed in case they were selected by the map generator. The final step is saving. For a submarine, you may select the price, the class, alongside some additional details. The minimum price is dictated by the size of the hull. For outpost modules, you'll select the module type, where does it attach, where will it spawn, and its caps. You also may select how many of these may spawn as a maximum, and how common they will be. Wrecks, beacon stations, and pirates don't have any special fields you need to keep in mind. Once saved, you can do whatever you wish with it. It will select table from the submarine menus or spawn in your next campaign if it's an outpost, beacon or break. With practice and getting used to your shapes, you'll be able to create any submarines you can think of. We'll meet again. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoyed it, consider subscribing for similar content. Have a fantastic day.